Hi, this is Candace Freeman. I'm doing an interview for my um, Emerging Issues class for Dr. Redmond, and I'm going to conduct an interview with um, a 13-year-old to get his perspective on technology and new media in our society. So I'm going to have him introduce himself right now. So go ahead. I'm Grant Freeman. I'm 13 years old. I am in 8th grade, and I go to Hamlet Middle School. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what new media is and how you use technology in your daily life. So I'm going to ask you five um, different kinds of questions with different scenarios in. So you just give me your honest opinion. Um, doesn't matter what you say. Uh, just be relaxed and free and just whatever. So the first thing we're going to talk about is using technology and being able to disconnect from it. So think about that when we're talking about it. Um, so in your daily life, tell me what kind of devices you use. Anything. TV. Okay. That's really. Um, Xbox. Okay. Cell phone. And my laptop. And your laptop. All right. So are you constantly connected to them? Um, the, like the first couple, no, but I normally have my phone on me all the time. Okay. So on your phone, are you connected to any social networking sites? Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat. Twitter, I mean Instagram. Okay. And that's it. And you're connected all the time, correct? I have my accounts logged in all the time. All the time, all of those accounts, okay. Um, so let me ask you something. Um, do you think that you could disconnect from them easily? Let's imagine that your phone blew up and you didn't have your phone and your laptop stand. How do you think you would be able to, would you be able to disconnect and would you be okay with that or would you be wondering what's going on that you can't know about? Uh, I could disconnect, but it might be kind of boring because that's how I'm just adjusted to right now. Okay, okay. I'm used to having them all the time, and it would change my life, of course, so I would have to find something else to do. So do you think, would it would it be an easy transition for you? Probably not. Mm, not initially, but... Okay, but you would all. adjust to them. Okay. So the second topic we'll talk about is the Internet use and its impact on you and your how you think society views it. So um, I want to ask you, what's your opinion of how society as a whole uses the Internet? How do you do you think we use it in a positive manner or a negative manner? Do you think we use it to, to benefit our lives? How do you think society views the Internet? Well, there's... I kind of think of it as like two different people, the people, well, more three, people who are obsessed with it, people who use it like on occasion, and then people who just shun it entirely that they just don't like the idea of the internet. Okay, so as, as a society as a whole, so you lump them into three categories, okay, so you don't think our society as a whole views it as like a, a necessary resource that we can't do without, you think we're broken up into different sections. Oh, that's interesting, okay. Um, do you think that we're connected all the time? And if we're connected all the time, how does that impact us as an individual? So if you're, if I'm connected to the internet all the time, do you think that makes me uh, 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 to be able to think on a higher level, or do you think that might adversely impact me in a social aspect? Um, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Not 100%. No. Okay, so let's imagine you're connected to the internet all the time, and you've got the laptop, you've got the phone, you might have the Xbox going in the background, you might have them all going at the same time. How do you think that that impacts us, the way we behave in society on a daily basis? Well, it sometimes gives other people a thing to talk about, like, for instance, just the other day at school, there are these, there's this group of people, and they were talking about, hey, did you see that new YouTube video? Mm -hmm. If we didn't have the internet, that conversation probably wouldn't be happening. True. So that's true. It depends. It like affects how some people act, how what they talk, like what they talk about, and that's how some people just stay connected. Like, like relatives that live, live a long way away. Mm -hmm. That's sometimes how it's their connection. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So it kind of drives us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, third aspect we're going to talk about is multitasking and distraction. So, um, do you use multiple devices at one time? Yes. And, okay, so what do you use at one time? Tell me how you do it. I don't really multitask with anything except my laptop and my phone. Okay, so how do you use it? Let's imagine you've got your laptop here and your phone. What are you doing at that time? Well, normally on my laptop, I'm either on YouTube or Spotify. And on my phone, I'm normally messaging or texting. 
Okay, gotcha. Um, so let me ask you, when you're working on your laptop and you're working on your phone, let's say you're working on the paper on your laptop, whatever, mm -hmm. and you've got your phone and you're texting, does the texting ever distract you from your work? Sometimes, and then I'll glance back over to what I'm doing, and then I'll be like, oh crap, i got to get this done. Okay, so you can, you can pick up when you're being distracted, and you can rectify that problem. Is that mm -hmm. what you're saying? That's good. Okay. Uh, fourth one is the impact on education, and this is probably going to be huge for you because um, you, you're in a school that's very technologically advanced. Tell them about your school as far as what, what kind of awards you've gotten. Now your 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 the the acclaims that you've been given. Well, I think it was back in sixth grade two years ago. Our school got a two thousand dollar grant for lap for like each grade to have this large set of laptops for us to use in class. Awesome. So last year there was this one class we didn't touch pencil, pen, and paper once. Wow. We did everything on the laptop. But this year, not quite. We, we don't have one classes like that. But we do have a mandatory computer and applications class that we have to take. It's mandatory. No choices. No choices. Okay. So let me ask you, um, how do you think that's impacting you from an educational perspective? Well. Do you think that's really you, it helping you advance and prepare for the future? I think so because... Um, that's how I find out a lot of things because I'm not one who leaves the house very often, so I don't like have the chance to go to a library and go look at like an in encyclopedia or something. I mostly, if I'm trying to find something out, I'll Google it and see if I can find a reliable source. Okay. And go off of what I can find there. Okay. Think about think about children who or or kids who are in a school that does not have the same kind of technology that you have. How do you think their education is impacted in comparison to yours? It's maybe not as easy easily accessible, but I don't think they're learning anything or not learning anything different than us, really. Okay. Do you think that you might have an advantage over them because you are being taught from this technological perspective and you're you're using these devices where they may not be do you think that gives you an advantage or you think it matters in certain aspects yes because like when you're on a computer so sometimes like you be on the other tab like just the other day I was in computer class and then there was these other people playing a game while we were supposed to be doing something else mm -hmm. you can't necessarily be playing a game on the book you're reading the book okay so you can get more distracted while using the computer and it might affect you a little bit more than just reading a book. Oh wow, so you're saying that the use of the technology could actually distract you from the, the curriculum. Okay. It's sometimes very tempting to oh, wow. change over. That's cool. I didn't else. realize that. So this is the last topic and this is talking about the evolutionary aspect that technology is having on human beings and you, um, you know, I've interviewed a, a person in their mid-thirties uh, who was raised in this in this um, technological age, but wasn't born into it. And I interviewed someone who was never born, was, was not born into it, was not raised in it, and has an aversion to it. Now you were born into it. You don't know anything any different, okay? So I want to ask you, in your lifetime, what kind of changes, technological evolutionary changes, have you experienced um, that have altered your life in a major way? Have you experienced anything that's altered your life te from a technological aspect? Like, have you have you been through any computer, internet, any kind of change that has made your made you do things differently in your life from a technological perspective? None that I can think of off the top of my head. Okay, and that would make sense because you're a native to this. You're born into it. Um, so let me ask you this: going into the future, what changes do you? do you anticipate in your lifetime within the next, you see you're 13, within the next 60 years? By the time you're 73, what do you think will have will have happened in society as far as technology? Oh, I can kind of see it taking off because we have companies like Google who are like making cars that drive themselves are like right now and it's 2014. That's, that's wild. But that's... But we're talking about 60 years in the future. Yes. So just imagine all the possibilities that we already have cars that can drop themselves. I know. It's kind of scary a little bit. 
if they get teleportation. Yeah. I hope so. Um, anything you want to add to this? All right. I really appreciate your time. Also, okay. Thank you.